This was our first trip to Morocco since the beginning of COVID, so we wanted to spend as much time in Casablanca with my husband's family as possible. After a week there, we decided to visit their ancestral lands in the country and the cousins who live and farm there. Now just to give you a little background, I have been coming to Morocco for 18 years now, and the family land and farm has always been a source of warm childhood memories for my husband, but we've never found time to go there before. So as you can imagine, we were both more than a little excited. And his family, well what can I say? Moroccans are known for their hospitality, but his cousins treated us like royalty. The warmth and joy we felt during our visit made this one of the best weekends of my life. So let me give you a taste of Moroccan farm life. The first thing I wanted to see after breakfast was how they made their delicious homemade bread. So off we went to see the outdoor clay oven. This oven was made by them with what they have on hand. The cover over the top is to help protect it from winter rain and weathering and to increase the heat since it's beginning to get colder outside. Although they're all interconnected, each cousin has his own home and his own parcel of land which he manages himself in the way that he sees fit. One cousin, for example, has bought this truck in order to take his produce to the market. Furthermore, some of them are full-time farmers, while as others have their own professions outside of the farm. As we walk along, this cousin points out what land belongs to whom. Notice here on the right-hand side, a receptacle for catching rainwater. On the left-hand side, heads of lettuce are growing and are being watered by drop irrigation. I'll come back to the challenges of growing lettuce in Morocco a bit later, but for now we continued on our walk. We pointed out the family property limits. If you heard what sounded like batata, then you might have guessed that this is the Moroccan word for potato. This plant is absinthe and is known here as shiba. This is used as an alternative to mint in Moroccan tea and happens to be my favorite. Morocco is big, he says, and from this sweeping point of view, I'd say he's right. Here he takes us onto his own parcel of land where he starts by showing us his lettuce crops. He explains that managing this crop is a full-time job and he and his son are out here every day. Not only do they have to keep the birds away, they also have to clear out the weeds, thin the heads, and remove the bad ones. Due to their diligence, they were able to save the crop when an insect began attacking a few weeks ago. He also grows onions and potatoes, but says he stays away from carrots because they take too long to mature. As we walk on, we come across a fig tree that looks a bit strange, and my husband asks what's wrong with it. His cousin tells us that it's just covered with dirt and dust from the construction project that built this new road. He said it's really good. He assures us that the figs that grow on it are delicious. When my husband visited as a boy, all the kids from the neighborhood farms would get the household water here. All those folks from here, here, they all come and try to get water from here. This was the community well, and it was a huge meetup spot for the entire neighborhood. Today, it is completely deserted, as farmers are able to afford their own wells with pumps that are closer to their homes. The last stop before we head back to check on the animals is this turnip patch. I was amazed by how big and healthy and beautiful they were. As we begin to walk back, we pass by this cactus border. The first time I came to Morocco back in 2004, I was amazed by these cacti, especially in the summer when they produce fruit. I would always see trucks packed with cactus fruit in July and August. But one thing we noticed this year as we drove across Morocco is that the cacti are dead. When we see it here, we ask his cousin, 
who explains that about three years ago, a type of fly devastated this plant throughout the country. Really sad to hear because for me, this was such a symbol of Morocco. The seeds for this pumpkin actually came from Italy where his children live and he brought these back here to plant in Morocco. The manure that is drying on the wall here is used as fuel for the oven. And after the morning tour, it was time for some delicious food. And fun, Moroccan style. While the men went out for coffee, the women gathered together in one of the homes for tea and dessert and an impromptu henna party, complete with music and dancing. Did I say how much I love it here? Well, here we go. An early morning run to the airport. This trip is officially over. 